What is up YouTube? Every now and then I get asked the question, what does my current running shoe rotation look like? Or the question, which ultras can you pair up well in a running shoe rotation? So I kind of want to go through all the road running shoes of ultra that I currently have in my rotation. And when do I use them? What kind of runs do I use them? Do I still running them? How many kilometers have I managed to get out of them? Questions like that. If you have any questions about any of these shoes or any other ultra, please let me know in the comments down below. Not all of these shoes are the latest models. Starting all the way down here with the lowest stack height is the Escalante Racer. I bought this last year because a lot of subscribers told me that it's a great shoe. I thought I never needed to buy it because I was happy with the regular Escalante that I didn't need to get the Escalante Racer. However, I must say I am really amazed by them. I love them. They're currently my go-to shoe for in the summer when I want to go for a short sprint, a short run, somewhere where I want to go fast. It is extremely breathable with a super thin upper. However, when it starts to get a little bit colder, they are not the shoe that I will be using just because my feet will probably get a little bit too cold and here the winter can get pretty nasty. So far, I've already done about 80 kilometers in them, but as I said, I only do short runs in them. So I think they will last for quite a bit. If rumor is correct, we can expect an updated version of the Escalante Racer in November this year. I've not seen anything. I've just heard the rumor, no idea if it's true or if it's just gonna be a new colorway like always. Now moving on to the regular Escalante. So this is the Escalante 3. This one was released last year and I've done about 450 kilometers in them. After around 200 kilometers, it started to tear a little bit on the inside in the heel cup, but it actually never got worse and it never got uncomfortable. So I managed to get about 450 kilometers out of them. And honestly, I think I can still run in them if I wanted to, but right now I've, I've kind of just started to use them as a regular casual shoe. They are super comfortable. I would use them for like a daily trainer, something where I would run like 10 to 15 kilometers. They are a shoe that are nice to pick up the pace, but I like just using them as like a daily trainer, nothing too crazy. Or if I just wasn't sure what kind of run I'd do, I'll put them on, go out and see how much fun I have in them. But if I wanted to go for a longer distance or if I really wanted to pick up the pace a little bit more, then I would usually not take them. Both the Escalante and the Escalante Racer are perfect shoes for also strengthening for your calves and for your feet. I honestly think a lot of runners miss that in their rotation. Our feet are getting extremely weak because of the shoes that we wear. And I think that the Escalante lineup, they are amazing for for kind of keeping your feet nice and strong. If you're used to some more cushion shoes, then they are definitely something to get used to. I remember when I started running out in them, I would get cramps in my feet and in my calves, and that's exactly where they help me get my feet nice and strong to kind of prevent the plantar fasciitis from flaring up again. Moving on to the Touring. Now, this is the Touring 6. It's not the Touring 7. It's the newest model, the 7, has been released a couple of months ago. I have asked Alta to send me a pair. They said it's on the way. Few weeks later or months later nothing has arrived so i'm still using the, the six um, however i think i'm about to retire them that as you can maybe see on the camera again in the heel cup it's tearing so that's starting to chafe up against the back of my ankle i've already done about 340 kilometers in them so it's kind of a shame that they're already breaking and that i need to retire them they were a nice shoe for long distance something where i didn't really need to pick up the pace just something that i could just run in the miles and have enough space for my feet to splay out super comfortable super cushioned i really enjoyed them and i'm looking forward to testing out the seven if and when they arrive i might need to buy them myself this was a pair that was sent to me for review last year now i'm moving on to the Rivera and if you've been following me for longer you'll know that I was not a fan of the Rivera 1 or 2 when they were released. Now this is the Rivera 3 that was released a few months ago and this is the first Rivera that I actually really really like. I like wearing them for longer distance, I like wearing them for faster tempo runs, I like wearing them for intervals. They are a nice daily trainer that you can actually use for a lot of things. They bumped up the stack height from 26 to 28 millimeters and I think that was a great choice. Also the Rivera 3 doesn't have much of a sizing issue so also true to size unlike the 1 and 2. I've been running in the winter and summer in them and honestly they are my go-to daily trainer at the moment. So far I've run about 290 kilometers in them and there is no signs of wear and tear just yet so i might be able to reach 500 600 kilometers in them moving on to the out road now the out road is actually a hybrid running shoe so for both roads and for trails i didn't want to exclude them from this lineup because they are usable on the road actually it's best for if you want like loose gravel or like or if you're running in the woods or something something where it's not too hard to kind of maintain trails 
They are great. They are also fine on asphalt, but if you're really just running in a city, not a shoe that you'd be taking. However, a very plush, a very comfortable running shoe. So I would take the Alter Road out for a spin if I'm just not sure what kind of surface I'll be running on. If it's like a mixture of asphalt and gravel and woods, they are pretty cool. So far I've done 100 kilometers in them. Now moving on to the fastest shoes of Altra's lineup. This is the Alter Vanish Tempo. I bought this last year and I really, really love this pair of shoes. They are slim fit. They are meant for faster runs. I like taking them out when I want to go for a nice tempo run and interval sessions. They are pretty great. So far I've done about 360 kilometers in them and they're looking pretty good. Maybe I'm losing a little bit of rebound of the midsole, but honestly, I like running fast in them and they still feel great. We can't expect to see version two just yet. I've not seen any dates, so I'm even considering buying myself a second pair. I'm just hoping that Alter will release another colorway in Europe anytime soon so that I can get a pair. I will be traveling to the US in October, so maybe I will get a pair that is available in the US. So if you're looking for a road running shoe to run fast in, they are great. However, I do not use them for race day. That is what I use the Alter Vanish Carbon. Now this is Alter's racing running shoe. Same stack height, same midsole as the Alter Vanish Tempo. However, it has the carbon fiber plate inside it. Also the outsole is less durable. The upper is super thin, still comfortable for race day. I bought this shoe myself last year for 250 euros. Definitely not worth the money, but nowadays you can buy them on discount. We can expect a new version next year in March. I'm sure this pair will last until then. I really only take them out for race day. And so far I've done over hundred kilometers in them. And I still think I can still run in them for a few more races. My next race is planned for October, so I'll be using them. So far, after 100 kilometers, the only wear and tear that you actually see is the outsole. But other than that, they're still looking good and they still feel pretty good. So that is currently my road running shoe lineup. If you have any questions or if I missed anything, how about you let me know. Of course, there are a couple of shoes that I've left out, like the Paradigm or the Via Olympus. I've never run in Paradigm and the Via Olympus just didn't work out for me. I decided to retire them completely. And of course you have the Alta Provision, which I also have never run in, not a shoe that I'm interested in. If I would buy these shoes all over again, I would definitely go for the Escalante Racer instead of the regular Escalante. Of course they're different shoes, but they're a little bit too similar. There's no need to have both in your rotation. So if you're really looking for a minimal shoe like this, I'd go for the Racer. As for the Torin versus the Rivera, it depends what you like. If you need a little bit more space, then go for the Torin. If you don't need that much space, then I think the Rivera is a great daily trainer option. And if you're looking for a racing shoe, Shoe. Honestly, I think the Alta Vanish Tempo will be good enough for most of us. If you're really out there to get like a PB or you want to win races, then go for the Alta Vanish Carbon. I'm sure you can get them pretty cheaply nowadays. The next version will come out next year around March, if I'm not mistaken. And of course, before I forget, the Alta Via Olympus 2 is rumored to be released in November 2023. Probably another shoe that I will be testing. Please let me know in the comments down below if you want to get a pair. Thank you guys for watching and see you guys next time. Bye.